another really interesting study on the impact of tarping on soil ecology. Eva Kinnebrew, welcome. Hi, everybody. Um, it's amazing to be here. It's rare that I get to talk to such a big group of people, so it's really exciting. Um, yeah, so my name is Eva Kinnebrew. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Vermont, and I'll be talking about an experiment that I did just this last summer um, on tarping. So I'm sure that a lot of you know what tarping is or even use it on your farms. Um, tarps are used uh, to suppress weeds, to hasten decomposition and control erosion. Um, here I'm specifically talking about impermeable uh, plastic tarps, so not like landscape fabric or stuff like that. And specifically, I'm interested in two different kinds of tarps, silage tarps, which I've seen used a lot uh, in Vermont, and then also clear plastic tarps or solarization tarps. And I was really interested in these two different tarps because they have similar uh, outcomes, but they function via very different mechanisms. So silage tarps by shading out weeds and uh, clear plastic tarps by solarization or extreme heating. And I was specifically interested um, when I learned about tarps in their ecological effects and specifically thinking about their impacts on soil biology and also soil properties. So in this experiment, I uh, had three different sites. So I studied at Diggersmith Farm and Intervale Community Farm, which are in the Intervale in Burlington and Catamount Farm, which is in South Burlington. And I had three different treatments, a silage tarp, a clear plastic tarp, and a control, which was um, frequently disturbed via hoeing. And the two tarp uh, treatments were on the fields for around three and a half weeks. And here's what our fields looked like. So um, three farms, there were six replicates of the three treatments at those three farms. And I'll also note that each farm had a slightly different soil type. All right, so now we can get into some of the findings. Um, the biggest finding was really uh, about soil temperature. And I think a lot of farmers probably um, had suspected this already, but uh, the tarps do really have an impact on soil temperature. So these results show the soil temperature um, 10 centimeters below the surface. And you can really see that the clear plastic uh, tarps, the, the top red line, uh, those tarps uh, heat up the soil from anywhere from five to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's pretty crazy that 10 centimeters below the surface, you're getting above 110 degree uh, temperatures. Um, at, you know, at the peak uh, heat of the day. And the temperature wasn't as extreme for silage tarp 10 centimeters below the surface, but at the surface, the silage tarp um, had more of a difference from the control plots. So in terms of soil moisture and soil nitrate, I found uh, kind of variable effects depending on farm. So that's why here I separate the results by farm. Um, so for soil moisture, you can see that each farm had a very different sort of baseline uh, soil moisture um, content. Um, Catamount, if you remember, that's this super sandy um, farm. And so they tended to have much lower water content. But you can see for each farm that it, it seems like the clear plastic tarps do reduce soil moisture. It's not immediately apparent why that is. Um, my guess is that it's because a lot of the soil from this, uh, sorry, a lot of the moisture from the soil kind of um, condensed on top of those tarps. And so it was really just that the water was sitting on the, the tarp surface. Um, I will say that I don't have too much confidence in these results representing sort of the overall trends of tarps. And I really think that we need um, a study that more looks at a long-term effects of soil moisture. Um, for example, if it had just rained before we had collected soil moisture, we might have seen completely different results. And then for soil nitrate, a lot of farmers have expressed uh, interest in tarps uh, for increasing soil nitrate. And we did sort of see that at two farms, at Catamount and Diggers. Um, it especially seems like the clear plastic tarps had more of a positive effect on soil nitrate availability um, than the control plots. Um, however, we didn't see that trend at Interbail Community, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Interbail Community Farm. Um, and one possible reason for that is that they used a slower releasing fertilizer. 
And so if we had actually sampled a few weeks later, we might have seen more of an effect. So this, both of these graphs kind of go to show that there's more research to be done uh, on these trends. All right, so now I'll talk about arthropods. Um, so arthropods include organisms like beetles and ants, millipedes, mites, isopods, springtails. So all of those hard body uh, invertebrates. And that's actually what the main focus of my PhD is on is about arthropods in agriculture. And so I was really interested in looking at those communities under tarps to see what the effect was. So in this plot, this shows changes in richness or total species um, numbers from baseline. And you can really see here that the tarps do have a dramatic impact on the soil or the surface active arthropod community. So in fact, when the tarps are on, the tarps treatments have um, on average 13 fewer species than the control plot. And even one week after the tarps were removed, there was still a significant effect between the tarp treatments and the control. However, uh, by three and five weeks, we see less of an effect. Um, and so it, it does seem like when the tarps are removed, these arthropods, uh, their diversity is recovering. But um, I will say that there's a lot of questions we had about the long-term nature um, of tarp usage and on these communities. So next, um, we wanted to kind of confirm uh, farmers' experiences with tarps as a weed suppression technique. And so we looked at weed coverage for five weeks after um, we removed the tarps. And we did really see that the tarps had um, a really positive uh, impact in terms of reducing weed coverage. So by five weeks after tarps were removed, the control plots had around 90% weed coverage, um, whereas the tarped plots had only around 30% weed coverage. And you can see in these two photos, um, the control plot versus uh, a silage tarp plot, and that's at five weeks after tarps were removed. Um, in the control plot, you can't really see it, but there is, we did plant lettuce uh, in there. You just can't see it at all because of the crabgrass that's growing. And in the silage tarp plot, there are a good amount of weeds, um, but the you can really see the, the baby lettuce that we had planted. And I, I don't show the crop uh, yield results here, but we did find a positive impact of tarps on crop yields as well. Um, however, one point of caution is that the tarps were not effective for all weeds. In particular, purslane um, did not mind being under the tarps at all, specifically the clear plastic tarps. So even though the temperatures under the clear plastic tarps get to really, really hot at the surface, it can be around uh, 140 uh, or even slightly higher degrees Fahrenheit, purslane grew fine. And so that's really important to keep in mind if you are a farm that has high abundances of purslane, tarps may not be the best option. So just a few takeaway messages. Um, tarps drastically heat soils. They can impact soil moisture and increase soil nitrate, but we do need more uh, uh, results on that to really confirm that. They do have um, some short-term impacts on soil arthropods, and they are effective at controlling most weeds, but there is still a lot to learn. Um, I think that the tarping system is super complex, and uh, I, yeah, I've just been really impressed with the use of tarps, but also um, finding myself more and more interested about their long-term effects. So studies that span multiple years, I think would be really useful. So with that, um, I'll thank everyone that contributed to this project, including the farms, my research assistants, um, people from Agroecology and Livelihoods Collaborative, um, including people that are here like Scott Lewins and Becky Madden, um, my committee and people that helped in the lab. And then also shout out to SARE that funded this um, project um, in addition to um, UVM Extension, GUND, um, the ALC and the National Science Foundation. And with that, I would love to take any questions. Thank you so much, Eva. Very concise, <clears throat> rich content. And yeah, that personally survives flaming for weed control. So no surprise, mm -hmm. <laughs> clear plastic won't kill it. Um, and I hadn't even realized, I didn't do this on purpose, but uh, some people might know 
half of my job is working with the SARE program. And I would say, I think all of our, all but one of our research <laughs> presentations today were supported by SARE. So I will pretend that I planned that. Let's see, we probably have time for one question. We'll be a few minutes behind. Um, one question is, um, what kind of clear plastic did you use? And do you think landscape fabric is potentially better for soil health since more water and air would get through? Yeah, so the clear plastic that we used was recycled from a hoop house. Um, so in general, we, from my research, I saw that a lot of people that were using clear plastic were just using sort of the plastic that they took out, down from hoop houses or greenhouses. So we tried to replicate that. And then, yeah, I, I actually did a smaller study two years ago looking at different uh, tart materials and landscape fabric did have a less um, negative effect on soil arthropods, um, probably as you say, because the water and air get through, so there's less of a, an extreme temperature effect. Um, however, there might be some functionality in terms of uh, weed suppression that land, landscape fabric might not have um, when it's compared to the more uh, impermeable plastics. And Great. I, yeah, I'll try to answer some of the other questions in the chat. That would Thank be you, everyone. Thank you so much.